acknowledge it, then let it go and then go back to what you was doing. And I did acknowledge it and let it go. So, you know, right. it's been a pressing concern. I mean, it's been years. So yeah, too many years. Too many. And it's just bothering me. Today was, you know, they say we have good days and bad days, but today was not a good day. It was a pressing thought that yeah. kind of but took me through every day. I think when you, when you have things on your mind like that, like I had, uh, my situation was very so prevalent on my mind last week. You know, you go through and I think once we learn to hand things over to God, Buddha, Allah, whoever well, it is you worship, you, you can find that peace within yourself and you can let go and let, let God. go and let God handle the situation and uh you know, hopefully you come back and come out on the better end. I hope so. Yeah. You know, God, God is a, God is funny. He's a funny guy. Yeah, yeah. Because he he did something funny to me Sunday that was just it was a wow moment. Wow. Yeah. So good. Don't forget, we giving out tickets this week. I got tickets to a comedy show, and y'all gonna have to pay attention and call it because I got a set. It's for September the twelfth. It's a masquerade party. And ballroom. We're gonna be at fifty four twenty nine Chestnut Street. I won't be there, but it'll be some great comments in there. I got two tickets, so make sure y'all listen, pay attention, call in. I'm gonna be asking y'all one of the trivias. I might ask y'all in about thirty minutes something that happened thirty minutes prior. So you know you gotta pay attention. I might ask y'all what word did simply be say that was having his week. So y'all gotta pay attention. Y'all gotta call it. Write this number down: two six seven three six eight five three two eight. That's the calling number. Now, Mark Five won't give y'all the office number where you might want to get in touch with this person. But dig this: don't call him for no ticket. Call this number today. Y'all understand that? Five seven seven nine six nine seven. If you want to reach anyone for voice conversation. We'll get tickets to November 7th meet and greet, hosted by Open Conversation. Uh, I'll be giving some of those out next month. Oh, that's what's going on? Yeah. I'll yeah. get out of this and come up in the building. You know, this door photography and film is going to be in the building. Pictures, videos, and a lot of people that network with us throughout the years of Open Conversation. Mm. So, what time? 6.08. We have two guests coming in the building. Today's topic is going to be about school. Everybody's like, what y'all want to talk about school? We don't be all over the place, but it's going to always come back to school. So, mm -hmm. stand by for that for the 7 o'clock hour to 8. We're going to have Melita Johnson and Antonio Wright, which is one of the original open conversation host and this will be the first time that he rocked with us on the radio so yes yes it will be last week we had mr fast lane call in this week we got uh mr right never yeah. wrong Is yeah. That that's what, yeah that's what he used to say <laughs> that's what he used to say um definitely check out all the past open conversation shows on youtube search sador s-a-d-i-o-r l-l-c You'll find the women's empowerment, men's empowerment, cancer walks, and when we started out in the living room to halls and centers. Right? All right. Right. What's up, Mr. Divine? You ain't pointing the break yet. Did you say must, sir? <coughs> yeah, I said what's up, Mr. Divine. Okay. I said, Mr. She's going to be on us. I'm just going to be on us. What's up, Mr. Soon. Divine? I mean, I'm, I'm close. And if he gonna swing, I get hit first. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so I, I, I make sure y'all can uh, get hit. Suffocate got Suffocate you, got you that. Got to get that. <laughs> Suffy, you gotta eat that one. Miss Stacy. Yes. Thank you for coming and being one of our special co-hosts. You're the first um, special co-host of the season. Of the season. This is something that we're doing new. Oh, forever. Yeah, and we bring back. Uh, Special co host not special guests, but special co host you know, to uh, help us out. Shout out to Liz for that idea. Um, okay, Liz. 
Yeah, yeah that's somebody who we're going to get on the show, too. So if anybody sees Liz out there, grab and tell her open conversation with them for Where you at, Liz? Where you at? Because you know she probably listening. Tell her, bring it. Call in 267-368-5328. <laughs> We're looking for that girl Liz. Right. What's up, man? You call in. You know, show support. I guess we go to a break and come back. And what are we going to do? I suffocate some of the ones and twos. We <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>, support it. <laughs> Mr. Devon. DJ Mandy Strong, suffocate, trying to take your job. <laughs> you can you can you rock away. This shit turn it off. I was going to do this. It's real crazy. <laughs> Interesting. I don't know what that was. What? When we first came in the bachelor, it was in a pill bottle. <laughs> and Tony closed the pill bottle. Oh, we thought it was that's what we just thought it was something. That was the smell was coming from. <gasps> And then all of a sudden, this one noticed some shit moving in the. Uh oh! <laughs> yeah. And he was like, oh shit, there's a fish in there. We opened it up. And for the rest of the show, we thought that we had damn something. Yeah, he attacked the glass, made sure he was moving. Damn, Ooh. We didn't kill this girl. Yeah, this girl Only on your stream you can check that behind the scenes story <laughs> out. Don't hate us because he's still swimming. That's cool. yeah, he's still very much alive, so we didn't he's kill good. him. That's we can't fish, fish mouth to mouth. Yeah. 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 Omar 100 is the password for the uh, Wi-Fi, I think. Omar 100. Oh, that's Monica and Mar Marquise. That's their name. Marquise is Flex. Okay. So it's okay. Mo, M-O. Hold on. Yo, do a video saying, tune in, check out your, uh, thumbs up. Tell me what you're Ready? So, yeah. Make sure you check out Simply. Hold on. Make sure you check out Simply D's Dumb Dumb Moments on Open Conversation, brought to you by E100 Radio. Uh, yeah, E100 is what? Oh, don't Let me see it. Because we on. We live. Stream, what's up? How y'all doing out there today? We back at it. Second show of the new, new show, new season. Um, things are much better this week. More lively and... Uh, Looking forward to bringing the guests to the studio and talking about the school systems. And uh, we hope you stay tuned. Don't change the channel. Stay with us. We have some very important information coming at you. Don't and, log off. <laughs> sure, we're sure you're going to like what uh, what we got coming your way. Forward that one to me. This is the heat Capital M. What's that? I got it. Capital M. Capital M. Capital everything is capital, I think. No, the only thing that capitalizes is the M. The M? Yeah. The lowercase O. Yeah. M A R 100. I guess I'm still on my home. I'm on. It is a Come on. You want to do a So both of them work? No, I didn't try that. Uh, um, Mark, what's 267 No, because this is what I, well, I hit the back key, go down, and it's back, and I went back too far. Um, it's on my 100 app. Put the stuff in there. I need to start taking the stuff in on your bed. Try it. So, so how to do it, son? I worked the best joke in there. Yeah. Listen, you know how. What's his name? 
um, Bill Cosby. They said he was with all these women. Do y'all remember the DMX song? It was like Moesha and Keisha and Teresa yeah, yeah, yeah. about three Kims. You gotta listen to when DMX go through that, and then at the end he go, "What a little moon from me." <laughs> that was that's uh uh what's his name? That's a Bill Cosby. He was like, "Who was you with?" I was with Keisha, Keisha, Felicia, about three Kims and a whole lot of East. What a little moon from me. I'm, I'm, I'm going to call Manny when I get home and have him cook that and send it to him and download it for my flash drive. That's the name. Got another song ready? Matter of fact, that's Manny right now. He, um, did y'all call and talk to him? I'm texting. I told him I wanted on the phone, but I'm texting. Yeah, you know, you got to scroll on him. You get the ones I sent you? No, you sent me something? Yeah, no, because I was looking for them. I sent you a whole lot of drops. I didn't get no emails from I you. I sent you one. Did you? Yeah. I didn't get none of them, but I looked before I looked down. I sent you zero drops. Yeah. That's why I just told him we don't have any drops yet. What did I owe you? yet? I got to go all the way back through emails and get them. Because, you know, that computer is... Uh, so I gotta go through. It's like dry. We can't do this. Yeah, no, we're not definitely. Something. I turn this one all the way down to like forty. Oh, that feels good. Can you turn it? When you have to check them out. <laughs> <laughs> he was being sussed and boasted. I told you I was breaking one there. Yeah, you wasn't joking. Where you get that from? You went bored? I got one that broke the computer. Um, a while ago. Yeah, I'm going to do So. I sent you all of them. Yeah. There is nine nine. I sent them to you. Anytime y'all send me something, just text me. I got a price on my screen. I was looking at it. Yeah, I, I pulled up a whole lot of the uh, some of the other ones that were still good. It's from the old ones. You just sent them all to you. You cracked the tablet? Yeah, it fell on me. I gotta get it fixed. Yeah. What were that place set on um, City Line Avenue that you went to? In that parking lot where, um, where did we go eat that day? Oh, it's in that parking lot? Oh, yeah. Okay, all right. I know. Where was that place you had? I don't know the name of it, but I know what, what you're talking about. Honey, what, the honey, honey Grove. Honey Grove. Mm -hmm. That is probably some water. So it's right in there? What's the name of it, you know? Uh -uh. I'll find it. It's just, they got a Facebook page, too. So I go to church Sunday, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm in church, and I was looking to see if she was going to come in. So she didn't come. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, I'm going to just go by a crib mm -hmm. just, just, to, just to see her, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, as I'm doing that, God was like, nope, you're not doing that because the dream it was, y'all was not going to see each other for a whole month. I was going to step back and take a break. I was, so I'm like, all I want to do is see her smile. I just want to go by and say, nope. So I'm like, okay. So I'm sitting at the red light on the boulevard, the big pull up right next to me. Wow. <laughs> so you were nowhere near her? No, I wasn't. I was on the, on the boulevard going going the other way because I was being obedient, and she pulled up right next to me. Her daughter was driving, so she was in the passenger side, and she rolled down the window and just gave me a smile. I was like, "Hey, what's up?" I was like, man, "Are you kidding me?" Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah
we I mean, we must have been talking about it. You know what I mean? And then we were like, touch on it, go to the song, then come back and do the news. All right? We're done, done, We talk about it, song, news. Can I ring the bell? Nice. This is you know, they're talking about the radio. Love the princess comedy. I'm back. We're back. We didn't go nowhere, but we're back. Um, please, y'all look at you, stream. Y'all go here and see a lot of funny footage in the back. Did we shout out Chris when we first got here? Yeah, yeah, you did. Right, it's always behind me. Quiet as a mouse. Let some black stuff go down in here. He's gonna be right with us. <laughs> uh, Chris to all black events because he knows what the blackness is. He know when to say suck and know when to say what's up. He was on his subject with Book of Nimrod, so I know he didn't see everything. <laughs> yeah, so he know when to say what's up. <laughs> when I came up today, he said suck, and then I was like, oh, 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 So all the footage y'all see, you know. 90% of it's courtesy of that man, so we always want to play those that's behind the scenes besides Mr. Because I know y'all watching us on YouTube and y'all cannot see his face behind the camera, but that's Mr. Devon, y'all. He's been with us since we started. We're like 60, so. Not mine. Not mine. Not mine. Look at everybody looking around. <laughs> that might have been my mama. As long as it's on vibrate. <laughs> that is, she called her. 6.22, we're going to go into Simply D's Dumb Dumb Moment. Okay, so my Dumb Dumb Moment this week is titled, How Can We Not Forgive Small Transgressions? So I was sitting back to the thinking uh, about what the Dumb Dumb Moment should be this week, and this is what I came up with. Someone has hurt you or you've done them wrong. They apologize, and you can tell they mean it. So why don't we forgive them? Why would we rather hold on to the pain and make them pay for that same mistake over and over and over again? Really? I think this is a dumb, dumb moment. Why can't we forgive the person and move on with that person? If the apology is real and heartfelt, why not forgive them? Did God not send his only son down here to die for our sins? If God can forgive each and every one of us for the things that we've done wrong, if he can forgive anyone or someone, no one is above God. So why is, so why is everyone not able to forgive someone? Don't be a dumb dumb. If someone gives you an apology, and you accept that apology, and then you know it's heartfelt. They didn't kill, they didn't do anything drastic, it was just a small transgression. Forgive that person and move on. Forgiveness is also cleansing your soul. And that's my dumb, dumb moment. Go ahead, Dark Child, I see you ready to go. Yeah, I was. <laughs> Sound like last week. Me and my was over here talking about that. Sound like last no, week, not, we no, were talking no, about no, forgiveness. No. And you, you shared a moment, don't ask me. You, you said. Oh, but you went in anyway. Okay. No, I went in after the camp. Yeah, after. So, we didn't do that. We family. We can talk about everything after the camp. Not on the camp. But you had your little dumb dumb moments and, and, and you said the peace, but it sounded like last week, but it happened. No, I, was, I was talking to some like people and they were talking about how can you not, how can people not forgive people for small transgressions? You went to church. You went to church. Yeah, I'm going to church. Trans right there. Church birds. Trans. I told you. Not number nine. My nigga. I told you what happened to me on Sunday. Church birds. Transgression. Spell it. That's what I said. 
Spank me. Spank me. Spank me. No, no, no. I'm going to write it down. Transgression. Sound like a T-R-A-N-G. pastor word. Church word. R E S S I O N S. Yeah, I might be coming. Okay, now. You're going to become a pastor? Okay, Deacon in law. Simply Deacon D. I need to call us. Listen. I'm going to call it. Church. 267-368-5328. If you got a church word and it's the best church word, I'm give you these tickets for that show. You got a top transgression. You got one green involved. You share it when you get time. He said, I got it. See, you pay for the line. You pay for the You made him take the headphones off. <laughs> he said, I got one. <laughs> uh, that's a word. Yeah. Let me write that down. Uh, call us. Y'all go ahead and call us. Because he might have that ticket. <laughs> wow. That's crazy. <laughs> but you know, we talk about small transgress, like somebody was talking bad about you or, you know, something like that. We're not talking about, you know, you killed my brother or, or damn, why you had to use that one? <laughs> Look, yeah, well, you know, <laughs> I'm saying, regardless of what I take for instance, like, and, and I'm not picking on them, they did what they did, it's, it's cool. I don't know if I could have been there. The people down in Charlotte who forgave the, the guy who came in and killed the people in the church, mm-hmm. and they all said we forgave you. I, I don't know if I could have done that. I don't, you know what I mean? That, that's just me, okay? And we got a, uh, uh, a response from DJ Manny Strong, and he says, even if. They don't forgive you as long as you ask God forgiveness. You, oh well. You crazy? Yeah, maybe Manny Strong is with you all good. But he said, oh, well. even though, even if they don't forgive you, as long as you ask God for forgiveness, you. Oh well, now we know what DJ, DJ said. What, what, what you, you couldn't text no more? He couldn't. He said, because he said, I asked him for something. He said, I want it. Maybe he had to go. Maybe our DJ had to go and get this hand. Uh, I didn't need it right now, Manny, but he good. He said, Oh, gotta go. Well, you know what? It, it, it comes back to what I was saying earlier. If I think we are obedient and we ask God for certain things, He will grant you those things. You know what I mean? Because, mm-hmm. like I said, I was telling Dark Child while we were at commercial, the U Street people heard it. Um, Sunday, I wanted to see Alicia, and we had made this agreement. And yes, sir, you know that? yeah, that's my baby. Okay, it's my and baby. I was, I was waiting for her to come to church, and she did not. And I wanted to stop by our house. But God was like, be obedient, don't go by the house. And my thing was, I just wanted to see a smiling face. So while I'm on the boulevard, I pull up at a red light. And I'm just sitting there, chilling, listening to music. She pulls up right next to me, rolls down the window, and gives me a smile. And we're busting it up at the red light. And that's all I needed to make my day complete. So he gave me what I want. Sound like Cisco. Cisco who? Incomplete. <laughs> 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 he was like, see, you can see how happy I am now. Celebrate uh, y'all. Wow. So I'm glad because you got a glow like no other. I thought last week we was going to be digging a ditch. <laughs> Me and Mark went out to look for a plot, a tombstone. We was like, it's over for our bread. You will not be back with us. <laughs> We went really? out so we can get our money back because we did put a deposit on the headstone. <laughs> we thought it was over. Yeah. Cash out. Uh, she gave him mouth to mouth. He is resuscitating, right? Suffocating. <laughs> just like you. Just like you. Uh, well, if you have any, what you say, church words? Church words. Better be bigger than transgression. <laughs> <laughs> Call in 267 368. Five, three, two, eight to win tickets to the comedy show. Uh-oh. Somebody's tight touch. shot won't do this. Uh oh, Manny Strong won't sound like this good right now. Uh, we're gonna take a quick break, come back with some OC news. 
talk about some of the crazy news that's going on this week. You're tuned in to Sador Presents Open Conversation Show here on E100 Radio. Oh, we got a call out. What? What? Manny Strong said, call his house. He said, call his house? Yeah. He put his phone number down here. He said, call my house. Answer Phoenix. And put out the spot about the topic. Okay. Ooh. Oh, is that like his wife is Deacon, right? Yeah. No, radio station. Radio station. Who is? I just picked certain songs. It's a big market. What's that? What's your hot? You going home or you going to work? I like this. I just picked it up. Well, I'm close enough. I'm close to you. Come up, step down to I'm on, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on, we had old Archie Dollars. She's taking that and watching it like my son. Yeah. Step down. You remember you used to get a sovereign bank right there? You remember calls? I'm inside that old sovereign bank. Where you see my car? Where you see my car? Where you see my car? I don't think I'm going to call him. He passed away. He did? All right, come on. Wow. That's why you see Diva putting cancer stuff up there. Yeah. You're going to come show us some love. You know, some magic. Yeah, we're going to come show us some love. Oh, we call him Phoenix when she come back. Oh, yeah. He said call my house. We on it. We on it. She and Moss, you know, MCP, 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 so why is we call why, is, why is we playing music that we're not there? Because I don't think that song out. You're sending me mix. We ain't gonna play no mix over and over again. Good. Yeah. I asked you to send me songs. You never know, sent me songs. You sent me different. He's fast. I texted him. He said, "Cool." But now you texted to him. I said, "Damn, how many phones that he got?" He's talking all of us at the same time. We don't put this mix on back at the time anyway, right? Uh, his mix can go on, yeah. His mix can go on. Uh, it's ready for the first time. So that way the guests can come in. So, like, quarter of the mix because Tony texted me saying, I'm fine. I told him around quarter. I'm sorry, my brother did. I'm sorry, my brother did. One and only, Philly. <coughs> Y'all must be in a good space and place. Oh. Yeah. Oh. You and Gary. I mean, we've been busting up, we've been talking. That's you know. good. Yeah. Damn, I want to change my settings on this one. See if I have enough time. Well, I got no news. Stuff. News. DJ Ming Strong is going to be invited yesterday. I'm just checking for this. It's at 11 o'clock. Yeah, 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 it's at Mm. Oh, my Steelers oh. take it to they behind. Your Steelers? Yeah, I like my Steelers. Okay. You not an equal? No, no. <laughs> in Joe. I just work for him. That's it. Oh, I got the Joe. Yeah, well, I hope my Steelers take it to the Cheech and Brady and I'm Patriots just not tonight. Mm. And I don't care who don't like it. Mm. Mm. <laughs> 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 Some of y'all, y'all, somebody better call in to get these tickets. When that for that church word, somebody is calling their grandmother right now, like Nene. <laughs> What's that saying, church Nene? I wonder if that where they got that dance from, Nene. 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 So what's in the news? It's the Nene. It's the Nene. You can tell you ain't got no bug kids. They done, they done private school that dance. It's called the Nene. He called them Nene. 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 He called them Nene. He called them the Nene dance. He don't have no street kids. You don't, because your street kids is the cred is going and so is the street kids. Nene. 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 Nene.
Happy birthday to my son Joshua too. Happy birthday, Happy John. Birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to John. Remember John? Hey John. No, little John. You know John. He was on the show. Um, Linda's son. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy birthday, John. Birthday. Yeah, today is his birthday. A lot going on. A lot going on in September. Oh, Welcome all the kids back to school. Did y'all see my post the other day on Facebook? Yeah, I saw that. Did you see that? Uh, see uh, that. You know, everybody going to flood your timeline yeah, yeah, yeah. with yeah, yeah. kids and first day of school to my, ooh, where's the time going? <laughs> and you ain't going to see them no more this year. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm yeah, had to re and to I had to re edit the post because then, you know, candy sale. Everybody put that out there. Oh, Facebook. yeah, candy sale. And man. the Girl Scout. How do you expect kids to make? Money off that candy. Because you're supposed to only go to your friends and they expect well, my kids. So it's like, all right, if my kids sell candy, yeah, your kids sell candy. You buy for me, you buy for me. Well, let me tell you, one year when my son was in high school, sorry about that. My son was in high school, but he brought home a bunch of candy. Well, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I bought the candy bars. Mm -hmm. And he sat there, and it was just me, him, and his sister. I mean, we're not going to eat all that candy. So I took it to work. I got from my car to the front door at the job before I sold out the box. Boom. Put the box back. They, they sent them home with another box. <laughs> <laughs> that sold out. Took, took that back to him with the money, of course. He came home the next day with three boxes. Wow. Boom. What made and, me mad is the cheap sell all three toys. Oh, so, I, he, oh, he sold them? Mom sold them. Mom sold them. And then they gave him a prize. I'm like, oh, I think that's mine. Yeah, because I that's just said that prize would be cheap, though. Yeah. I got sell like, like 700 boxes for a slinky. It's <laughs> 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 true. I could have yeah. bought a slinky. I could have bought a slinky. What a wonderful toy. Let's get into the news. <laughs> you ready? Yeah, what's, what's your take about this? This Trump who is leading the Republicans for the for the for the candidacy of president. Like, are you kidding me? Trump? <laughs> this shows you where our world is going. <laughs> like, is that a two fail? Is that a two? That's a two fail. All right, now this is a disclaimer. <laughs> Especially the open conversation. We don't know nothing. That's all I'm saying. We don't know nothing. We're going to say stuff because we don't know nothing. That's just crazy. Yeah. You know what else in the news? The, the gentleman that uh, kidnapped that girl, 22 mm -hmm. year old girl, took her from Philadelphia. They found oh, him three days yeah. later in Maryland. Maryland. Remember that? It was yeah. all over the news. Yeah. You could see her um, being kidnapped. And then her car was used at a Mac machine. You know what he said? He kidnapped her in order to get money so that he could get to Virginia to see his kids because he had a situation that was going to cause him to be incarcerated in Virginia. Can I just say this? Ninja! Yeah. You was halfway to Virginia. Then mama just dropped out like that. <laughs> Why did he? That's the dumbest thing. That was the dumbest thing I ever heard. He kidnapped her to get money to go to Virginia. Well, he was already in Maryland. Just drive a little bit further. Right. He wanna. Uh, what is wrong? There, with there's some sleeping uh, criminals out there. I got, no, I can't. I can't say not just sleeping criminals. Oh, well, stupid, stupid people. people right. Period. Shout out to the CEO. Yeah. They got court. Four. It's four of them. Four Philadelphia they got corrections officers. Bringing drugs into the prison. Cell phones. System. And guess what? They didn't want an iPhone. No, I had a kid. Oh, no. I'm talking about the boy that was bringing in pills. Oh, yeah. A hundred. It is. I was just reading that. Prison guards charge. Right here. He so says a yeah, hundred oxy cotton. Yeah. A Blackberry yeah. phone for a fee of $1,500. Mm. Five others were indicted on similar charges. And look what, what the, the quote said a Nokia phone. To the prisoners. Apparently, iPhones aren't that a big deal in the phone like they are to us and the rest of the world. So, so they you wanted fifteen hundred dollars. So you could this is how the scheme. This is the scheme yeah. allegedly worked this way. The guards would meet an inmate's prosperous, his people's, mm -hmm. and his associates outside of prison. They would hand over cash and contraband. The guards would pocket the cash and deliver the contraband to the inmate. 
Now, those 40 guards and all of these, uh, what's it called? All of these inmates, all of these prisons were on State Road. Mm. So, <clears throat> one of these young boys was 23 years old. What, one of the uh, CEOs? One of the CEOs. Mm. They put their name and their faces in this thing. Mm. 23 years old. His like, life is <clears throat> ruined. Yeah. It's ruined. We yeah. gonna, we gonna get, he's going to serve time. What one of them was 23. And guess what his name was? Mark. Allegedly. George was 29. And another guy, 43. And another guy, 49. Wow. And they probably won't be able to get one guy's an extra charge because he lied because they investigated him in June and he said he didn't have nothing to do with it. And now they come out, he got an extra charge. Mm. 23 years. It ain't worth it. No, not at all. <clears throat> you got something, Steve? I certainly do. Y'all know who James Blake is, right? Yes. James Blake. Tennis player. Tennis player. Did you hear what happened in Yes. In New York. I yes. Heard. Yeah. Minding his business, standing down in front of the hotel, cop tackles him. Now, mind you, the cop was not in uniform. Not only was he not in uniform, he didn't identify himself. So now you got this guy charging at you, tackles you. So now the story has come out that uh, the police chief and the mayor of New York wish to apologize to him. But, uh, yeah, he said his attorney was a talk to him. Pretty much. Yeah, pretty, pretty much. much. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we ain't got nothing to Blake can't win no championships, no nothing in tennis. He ain't making no tennis money right now. So he's retired. His best thing, no, he's still playing on turkey. Oh, he, well. He, he needs to uh, get that money somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and he is. Uh, and Serena this week, too. Speaking of yeah. tennis. Yeah. That's the crime. And mother and the father said that other sisters say they don't watch it, they go shopping, they do other things. Oh, when they play? When they play. One of the reporters had the nerve to say, why are you not smiling? Mm. Her answer was, it's 1130 at night. I don't want to be here to beat Serena after she won. Because they're trying to say that you're supposed to, any other time, you're in here, you're pumped up and happy. But because you played your sister and beat her, that you're supposed to feel some kind of way. They're both competitive African-American women who play tennis. And it almost came to where Serena almost, Venus almost won. So... She gets in a, the match ended at 11.30 that night, 11.15. 11.30 they go in, so it's mandated that any USTA, United Tennis Association player, go get that press conference after the end of the game. So she's got a hand on her face, she's looking kind of rude. I said, what's the problem? She says, um, it's 11.30 at night, I don't want to be here, I'm tired. I got to get up early the next day at practice. And y'all keep asking me the same questions y'all always ask me. I'm tired. Yeah. And pretty much shut them all down. So, you remember Brownstone? The group? The group Brownstone? Yeah. I just read that one of them passed away Friday. Yeah. Oh, wow. Charmaine Maxwell. Her husband found her with a neck cut what? in LA. Her husband found her yeah. with a neck cut? Yeah. With a neck cut. No. Mm -hmm. Found her? Mm -hmm. yeah. I guess you could. I don't know. We thought you was going through that last year. No. Week. <laughs> 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 the life insurance policy. So, so Mark, we canceled the life insurance policy. You good? You good? You gonna be with us for a little while longer? I don't think we can afford to lose another number. No. On that note, we have something the store presents. Open the conversation on Heat Monitor. We gonna go into DJ Manny Strong. Shout out to DJ Manny Strong. Check this mix out. What's the address of the video? Uh, everybody asks my shit over right now. Eight, six, 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 six,
Not today. We gotta. We trying to get back into the swing of things. We gotta start doing that now since our OC lady passed. Okay. Um, so we got the OC lady. Um, we're gonna start with the OC lady. Um, since she passed, we're gonna start with the OC lady. Um, since she passed, we're gonna start with the OC lady. Um, since she passed, we're gonna start with the OC lady. Um, since she passed, we're gonna start with the OC lady. Um, since she passed, we're gonna start with the OC lady. Um, since she passed, we're gonna Leave. She's Texas. You know, she's <laughs> <laughs> she's she I ain't here from her yet. Well, maybe she maybe she'll call right. She talked. You talked to her, Chris. He didn't even know she left, did you, Chris? Look, look, he just find that out. Oh yeah, Liz not with us no more. <laughs> look, look like. <laughs> Well, she's done. Um, check her out. The meet and greet. November 7th. 
open conversation will be hosted. The extraordinary event in Sidor presents a meet and greet network of faith. Chuck Alibi's for tickets called 677 Hi, Phoenix. You're live on the air at Heat 100 Radio. Phoenix. You are live on the radio at Heat 100 Radio. This is Open Conversation. Oh, she go high, y'all. She go high, y'all. Did you hear what she heard her name? She's like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> We call it about the day's top. We just yeah, need yeah. to talk about fans. The armor. Can you tell us what the topic is here today? Tell us what we talked about. For forgiveness. Oh, you mean the dumb dumb moment? We're talking about the dumb dumb moment. We're talking about the dumb dumb moment. For forgiveness. Okay. okay. How do you, how do you, hold oh, let me pull it up. How can you, confusing people. The topic is cool. The topic right. is cool, but we're talking about. We'll go back to dumb, 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 dumb moment. And the topic was, how can you not forgive people for small transgressions? Hey, Phil, I can't quite hear. Is that how can you not forgive somebody in that way? For their small transgressions. Oh, 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 how can you not forgive your mind with their own dream? Yes. Uh, I don't think that there's not a whole lot of dream. It's kind of deep. She said, maybe because you got your own dream. So if somebody just say, forgive me, it's cool. And you say yes. Is it cool? Is it cool? That means our friendship is still cool. Yeah, it's fine. It's dropping the issue. It's over and done with. You're forgiving. So it shouldn't be brought up no more, right? You can't bring it up no more. It's over with. Hmm. Interesting. So, if. Let's say your husband, who we don't know, <laughs> did something. And he was mad. And he simply said, Babe, forgive him. Tell me what your feelings are thoughts and take me beyond that. If somebody, your husband, who we don't know, <laughs> Say, say, do something wrong. wrong. And then you can say, baby, just forgive you. What would you do? I'll forgive him. Oh, see, so that sounds like we know your husband. Yeah, I mean, you can't walk around and forget that. That's like I have to get tattooed in the mirror. So I'm going to tell my husband. So now, well, look, you got a applause. <laughs> <laughs> you get an applause. You get an applause in the background. Now, those are the people, for me, that would have been just the anime and Now, the topic for today is we're talking about uh, schools. Okay. What's your take on the state of public schools right now? Oh, my goodness. It's horrible. It's, it's entire state, like, all life support. Wow. Was that no. the dog we heard? That's what it is. It's a transgression. And so what's happening to our children in a school, in a public school, as of today. Did you use the word transgression? <laughs> <laughs> Why does everybody use it as a church word today? <laughs> I just started something. Everybody's using the word, why did you use the word transgression? <laughs> we did. Why did you use the word transgression? Because it, it's a thing. It's an offense. It's horrible. It's wrong as to what they're doing to our children in a system. And it's a train of thought. That's what it is. Okay, because everybody uses church words. Wow. Everybody uses what? Church <laughs> words. Church words? Yeah. yeah. So do you have a church word that I can use? Because transgression was one of them. And what's the other one? Mark? <laughs> you know how the pastor says, and we're going to take it to the spirit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need a church word when you want I want a church word and a saint. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's a church word. And a saint and the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. 
That's right. There you go. That's right. But yours was a big transgression, so I don't know what you did. <laughs> <laughs> she thought she was going with something today. I'm writing that down. Hallelujah. Because you know anything in the church is hallelujah. Man. Well, we're happy that you called, we called you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> See, right. Was that the dogs we heard barking in the background? Is that my dog? Yeah. Yeah, that was my dog. Okay, let the dog know that we all need more hundred radio. See? We even got a bark out. And no radio station ever got a bark out before. Did you, you, you hear that? As soon as she started talking to the dog, I said, oh, we got a bark out. That's next to a shout out. Alright. Did you hear that? We get a bark out. We get a bark out. Alright, well, we glad that you gave us the bark out. That's probably my So, we're going to call you back in case we want to talk about something. Uh, yeah, I have a good one. Thank you. Right, Hallelujah. You. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> if you would like to call in 267 368 5328 to send a shout out or a bark out, give us a call. We will have a bark out. Or a church word. Well, a church word, the one needs to take it. Give us a call. Again, that number is 267 368 5328. It has to be a transgression. And now we're going to go into your segment. Oh, we're going to my segment? Yeah. Right now? Right now. All right. All right. Somebody coming up to get you, good big brother. I'm going to bring you here. This is your girl. Come to the door. We have a 515 green building. On heat. 100 radio. Yes. yes. All right, y'all ready? All right, ready. That was really funny. I wonder if Manny Did you text her? No. His wife is a fan. She is listening. Get that thing up over there. Let her know. We go. Child, I got I to gotta stop because I just got a text message from Man Sean. Say, Great job. We don't need nobody. <laughs> that was a great, great segment. segment. Woo, we got another bark out. All right. You don't see what the time it is. This is my segment. And I'm here to let y'all know this is called Remember This, my throwback. Because these are some of the things I want y'all to remember. It could have happened earlier this week, but I don't want you to forget it. This is a Remember This, my throwback moment. Today, I want to talk about and remind you folks of stores. Mm. Stores that used to be in the Philadelphia area that may or may not no longer be. It might be one that's just hanging in. Y'all ready? Ready. Yeah. Mm. Did you hear you? <laughs> The first quite <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I used to work there. I go work. They still hang. Oh, I said some of them. They still hang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Woolworths. Oh. Yeah. They still got Woolworths, right? Yeah. 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 And Emporium. Remember that? Drug Emporium. Drug Emporium. Do you remember that? How about Hacking Juice? Wow. Yeah. wow. Channel home system. I'm gonna get you with this one. Side. Yeah. Ugh. All right. For all intents and purposes, how about the sounds of German town? Yes. Yeah. How about the sounds of the market? Used to get many tapes from that joint. Remember when all the records. All yeah. the stars used to come to yep. the sounds of Germany, the sounds of market, you had to stand outside and wait 
Before you get an autograph, I got LL Cool J's autograph. Now, this is the problem we got one of those hip hop names. Back then, I was going by the name of Shy Love. If I'm going to show that to somebody now, they're going to be like, you stole your cousin's autograph. But that was my name, though. Remember, we all had a hip hop record. That was the best. Sounds of Germantown, sounds of Marcus. How about this one? Crazy Eddie's. Uh, you remember Crazy Eddie? Crazy Eddie went to jail for all kinds of fraud, but he had the best Walkmans, he had the stereos, he had everything. He was the best when it came to electronics. Remember what he said? He would do the first three boxes. With, with merchandise. So when the auditors came in, they would only go three in and six high because he said, I don't have a ladder. So they would think all them empty boxes behind was inventory. Uh, that was the biggest international fraud scheme in the world. And then he started buying men panties. <laughs> crazy and he did it. And then he went off to jail. So those are some of the things I just want to think about. Somebody told me Zounds. Yeah. You remember Zounds? Yes. I couldn't even, I, could, I had to look back down on my little note here because I was like, Zounds. Mm -hmm. Maybe don't nobody remember that. But you remember when Woolworths was on Shelton Avenue? Yeah. Well, on the right side. Mm -hmm. And it used to be next door to J.C. Penney's. Yep. It was Woolworths, uh -huh. J.C. Penney's, and then the, do you oh, Shelton. I remember Shelton Ave. Shelton Ave was popping. Yes. Oh my God. They ain't popping anymore. Nope. Those were the throwbacks. Now they just got nonsense. Who goes to Five Below and Dots? All the whole crazy places. And, and he waited. I'll tell you. That's the key. I'll take that. Did you see that? I'll take it. That was Chris telling us that. So he said, Lady Strong said that was a great job. Kelly's Corner. See there? That's when you know you're not listening. I just got a text message that said Kelly's Corner. You remember Kelly's Corner? I just got that too. You got Did you say Corvette? Corvette. 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 That sounds like one of our hosts, don't we? And, uh, <laughs> no, that's what he called. Oh, that's what he called. Corvette. Corvette. It ain't Corvette. <laughs> <laughs> I said Corvette. I said Corvette. Man, you don't want the Corvette. You don't want Shout out the woman with the right name. What, what two you got? And Calico Kitchen. Calico Kitchen. You started ages now. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm like, I'm <laughs> stuck in Woolworths. <laughs> <laughs> Woolworths was a lot of the, the sit-ins and all of those other things occurred. Right. That was, right. You know, that was, Woolworths was really historical for those type of events. Silo, I remember that. That was in the Shutman Avenue. And there was just places. But. Well, you remember it's Sears. Not Sears used to be Sears so, and Roper. Sears used to be Sears, Sears and Roper. Yeah. But they don't remember that. No. They don't remember that. Right. So come on in, my brother. Come on in, come on in. My brother just came to the studio. We are talking about my throwback moment. Yeah. Tell me about your favorite moment. Yeah. Throwback 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 Sounds of German Tapping? Woolworths? I go Burger? Oh. Oh. He said, oh. <laughs> okay, now you tell him which one you did. Corvettes. You remember Corvette? Corvettes. Is that what? Uh, Southern Mall. Kelly, we don't Southern remember. You don't remember. Southern Mall. Southern Mall? 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 Southern Oh, oh wow. yeah. Man, yeah. strong is on it. Yeah. All right, listen. I'm telling y'all. If you can give me, I'm going to put my brother on the spot. He's going to give me a church word. Church, church word. word. Any church word. Any church word. Church. Today he said <laughs> transgression. <laughs> I got hallelujah. Give me the sound. <laughs> 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 now, anybody can talk about it. I got two tickets right here for y'all this Saturday at the Masquerade Ball. <laughs> we are, we're going to be somewhere that I'm going to be there, but it's going to be at 5429 Chester Street. I got two tickets for y'all. If you can give me a church word or see, Manny Strong is not playing. He is not in this contest. 
Because um, he on it, ain't he? <laughs> yeah, he gonna say, yeah. You're not in this. <laughs> I'm gonna need an old time store that was not there anymore. If y'all give it to us, call us in. Call the number is 267 368 5328. Get to another door for this open conversation. Well, he wants to radio. We'll be right back and start our topic. We're gonna be discussing the schools. We'll be right back. You don't remember that? Yeah, well, 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 Crazy Eddie's? It's, well, it's Walmart now. That's Tony. Yeah. That's Mark. That's Devon. That's Chris. And that's Miss Stacy. Right. He's just a firefighter. That's why he looks like he's a firefighter. 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 He's a for the boat. Um, what you have to do for the boat? Oh, you was doing first aid kits a couple weeks ago. Packing them, right? I've been shutting them eight. It was at four for hard. Then he went to Hunting Park. And now he's at four for the, um, I mean, shutting the eight. Because he wanted to go to a station that was busy. Not doing that. Battery died. Yo, this is so sexy. Show my mind. Remind you. Remind you. When we're no guests, you ain't doing nothing. Talk about schools. That's what we really got. We just talk about schools. Don't come home. Because it's seven o'clock. We get off at eight. Right, so we need to get into the topic of the house. Well, you know what your house is like. Oh, yeah. Who are you talking about? You know, he's up to it. You got my big bag? I'm going to do two hours, you know, hell. You want to remind me you got back again? Matter of fact, another memory of this whole, another silence and my phone fell. Silence came out and broke at the same time. That's how you, if you're going to mess up, you mess up all your records. You trying to put a new phone? I'm going to have to do it now. You know you're going to lose. Turn around, come. And I ain't supposed to drop an outer box. Yeah, I know. No. It fell like this. And what broke? Oh, the solid broke. That was there. Sure. Yeah, that was there. Hi. 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 Alex. Alex. Call him Bane. Bane. Slip this way. Sit next to me and slip this way. We get ready to go back on in. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. You know the power. You talking about school. So what's the footage for y'all? I don't know what you're saying. We're talking about what school is on the house. It's going to come and say, that's all it is. Open conversation. This is all it is. We're talking about the same thing. And once again, you're listening to the Open Conversation on Key 100 Radio. So we're going to get ready to get into this topic. We're talking about the school system. And, you know, we're just going to be all over the place with it. You know, touching different topics about it. You know what you think about it, how you feel about it, what they're doing good, what they're doing bad. So, so our guest right now in the studio, one of the guests, and your name is? Melina Johnson. How are you? I'm doing well. Good. 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 Thank you for joining us. So, yeah, because I've been trying to get on the show since we started Open Conversation. <laughs> Hello, Ms. Melina. How are you? I cannot complain one bit. I am Ms. Darkchild. Please let our listeners know a little something about you. Okay. Uh, once again, my name is Melina Johnson. I've um, been in education for probably about, in total, about 15 years. Started out early childhood education. 
uh, was director of a homeless woman's daycare program where I work with the homeless women and developing child care programs for their children. Uh, from there, uh, I found myself, they phased out the program, so I found myself without a job. So I kind of liked education, and my aunt told me about an apprentice program with the school district. So I decided to try it, got into school, got my master's degree and my teacher certification, and started working with the school district. Uh, after that, um, I did three years with the school district, and then I found out about an alternative program. And I've always wanted to work with um, children with discipline problems. So I was eager to get started. And that's what I do. So now I'm a special education director in an alternative school where I work with children, students anywhere from grade 6 through 12 who have been pretty much so suspended from the Philadelphia School District for a period of time until they can kind of improve their behaviors. And um, they're the best kids around, let me tell you. So you, you more so work for an alternative school district, not in our regular. If we know we all charter under the school district of Pennsylvania because basically that's where our funding comes from. Yes. But you work for an alternative program, which to those that are listening, would have been an I day the cooks, the booms, absolutely, the uh, the this I had, the just what's that other one? Cook, boom, and it was Carmen, a, Carmen, uh, it was another one. CEP. CEP, that's it. That's where they send out kids that couldn't behave in a regular regular school setting. Yes. So um you work in the more alternative to this school setting. Yes. So while you were in the school district for three years. What, what were some, some of the behaviors that you saw? Well, I think some of the key things, and I think that this still, still the same things going on. The classes are so crowded that the, it's difficult to maintain those students that they would consider difficult. They're difficult because you can't give them the attention that they need. If in a smaller classroom setting, you're able to focus and have those children focus better in class. So that was my biggest obstacle. I would have, and once again, I'm special education. So I'm in a special education classroom with 27, 28, 33 students. One or two kids with a TSS worker. Mm -hmm. If they even send a TSS worker. Oh, wow. A lot of times I didn't have one. And I would have someone that is supposed to be like a dean of students, and I could send my students to if I was having a problem, but you send them over there and they send them right like back. So you know, it makes it difficult to teach a student when they're struggling uh, to that level with behavior academically. You're trying to get their reading and math levels up. It's just a whole lot. And I think that is one of the major problems with schools because there's, the teachers become disenchanted because it's just so overwhelming. And it's, it's just really, it can be difficult. See, I work for the school district, and my mother is also an uh, educator. She, too, has a master's degree, principal certificate, master's plus 30 doctorates, all that, 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 that. But the bottom thing is, bottom line to the day is, kids, remember back in the day, you could get a TSS worker if you had ADHD or uh, OCD, some kind of disorder. Right. Mm -hmm. It's no more. Those days, but that is going, the child has to be diagnosed now with autism in order to get that type. They have to be somewhere within that autism spectrum, that Asperger's, that autism, in order to receive the services. Just for someone to sit next to them all day and say, chill, relax, I need you to get to work and, and be structured. It depends on the level. You, right. can, you can get, because I've, I've been working with a family, one of my, um, one of my uh, track parents, because I also coach, one of my track parents, her son, uh, yes, need, needed a TF, t needed a TSS worker, and he had a TSS worker. And this kid is super bright. Wow. Uh, he's um, should be second or third grade now, reading way below uh, above grade level. Uh, math. I mean, this kid is so bright that you would never ever really get to realize it because his behaviors are so so off the chart. Um, once he escalates to bring him down. It takes a team. So he has a TSS worker in the classroom. And it's uh, it's good when, um, as long as he's there. Uh, and But once again, like you said, due to funding, 
They cut, they cut right. hours. Uh, they right. said they can no longer provide it. And so now they call a mother day in and day out. You know, no teachers Mom in the school to administer the medication. So if you right. need to take that, they can Well, oh, right. let me ask, because um, I was watching something that Dr. Umar Johnson was saying, how some of the schools do have their funding for those aid but they take that money and they put it in other places, like they they like put it on the football or basketball team. Yes. Have you been aware of things like that happening here in our school system as well? Although it's it's never going to be um, it's never going to be put out there for us to actually see it. Mm -hmm. But I definitely believe that some schools, depending on the school and the administration, I'm sure that that happens. And I I I watch that. As well, mm -hmm. um, Dr. Johnson and his uh, that whole everything that he was saying, and it so hit home, and it was very um, it was very real to watch that as we were moving into the new the new right. school year. Um, so it uh, it just really put me on point to a lot of different things and okay. things that I share with my parents right. when they come in. You know, I'm very um, forthright with them. Mm -hmm. I, I tell them just what to look for in terms of the services that they should receive, um, what's good, what's bad. Because uh, I, I believe in if you're honest with the parent and um, you you know you really share with them and try to give them some um, some guidelines, mm -hmm. uh, they're able to make better decisions. It's especially now, you figure if I'm in a, um, I'm in the alternative setting, right? Mm -hmm. And you have these students that have been kicked out of regular school for a period of time. Mm -hmm. Now. In many of the cases, it's due to what? Things that are going on in the home, their behaviors. Right. Um, so at times, there's a, some type of dis dis detachment with that, with the parent, or the kid is in foster care, or it's just a boatload of problems. So to be able to actually get a parent in and to sit down and meet with that parent and, and you know, explain the situation, and explain the needs of the, uh, of the students to the parent, that's an obstacle in itself. Mm -hmm. So we can look at, yes, we can look at the, what the school district is doing and what they're not providing and where they're allocating funding and all those type of things. Um, but we also, I think one of the major factors is we need, we need to find a way to engage our parents. And that's when they come up with a lot of these community resource centers and all of that, right? And it's hard. Um, if you see my last uh, post, uh, comes back to that today. First day of school, all the parents taking pictures of their kids. Wow, time went so fast. Woo, first time in the ninth grade. Woo, my child is a senior this year. And then you don't see no more pictures of poor babies through the rest of the year. Because they're not going to, they're not going to parent teacher conferences. Uh, my brother and I, we came from Catholic school. Uh, you got suspended until your parent came to pick up your report card. They some kids who ain't never seen a fourth grade report card. And they in the sixth grade. Mm -hmm. Because their parent never got it. And, in school, and next year turned over, and they went to class the next year, never went back and got that fourth grade report card. So, half of them don't know. With us, parents had a time block. You ain't come get it. <laughs> <laughs> we did, um, I had orientation this morning with parents bringing up that topic. And as parents were coming in, and I, I, I always review the IEP of the student that's coming in so I can just talk to the parent about it, see what the parents' concerns are, because that's that one time of year in order for your student to start. Right. In school, they have to bring the student and they have to participate in an orientation process. So I might say to parents, so um, how many credits How many credits does he have? Or do you, what, what classes did you fail? Um, oh, well, no, we didn't get a report card. Oh, you didn't get the report card in June? Wow. No, I don't know. I don't know what he did. What, what, classes, you, what classes did you have? <laughs> no, unaware, and it's 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 really it's really sad. It is sad, and um, you know, so you just you just really try to work with the parents and just help them to be better, mm -hmm. because we can you know we can talk about them in a negative light all day and all night, but at the end of the day, right. we have to. We, it's, it's our job to. I mean, you, you're educator in the city. In the city, what do we need to do? We're we're more than educators. We're more than teachers. We're social workers. We're mothers to some. We're counselors. Um, yeah, you know, I had I had a, a young man that, um, and I, I still, I text him. He, he's one of my last year's graduates. And I just, I text him, um, you know, when we got back to school last week just to check how you making out, you know, because he struggled last year. The anger in his boy's face on a day-to-day -day basis was, it was, 
he walk in every day and I'm like, ah, oh. you know, because he was just angry, angry, angry. Had no place to live half of the time. Um, mm. Sometimes the aunt would let him stay, depending on how she felt. Sometimes she wouldn't. Then he went and had a child, and which added more to him. So now he gets a job at Dunkin' Donuts where he is up. He has to be to work at 5 a.m. before he comes to school. Wow. So he comes in, does prep at Dunkin' Donuts, and then comes and then comes into school. But he was just so angry. So when I checked in on him, he said he got another job, he's doing well, and he said, you know, I would have never made it without you guys. I just, you know, you guys actually cared. So I'm like, it, it's inspiring to hear yeah. that once again going into the school year and knowing that there's going to be somebody else that needs us. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, and it makes a big difference if if they know that that one person cares. And I co-sign on everything that Alita Johnson saying because I met her through Mark going to Roosevelt and she was on his heels and if it wasn't for her, trust me, he would have been out of pocket. But we're going to take a quick break right now. You tuned in. This is Door Presents Open Conversation here on Heat 100 Radio. We're going to come back with Ms. Alita Johnson, get some uh, thoughts from our co-host Stacy, and rock out for the next 40 minutes. We just going to do my segment. We'll be right back. Right. So you got more to alternative, more to alternative programs. So we're going to keep it to this. I guess the best way is what the school district is doing uh -huh. as opposed to what the alternative school is. Because she's really in an alternative. If they, they don't work here, they send them to her. Yeah, if I, they don't I work your out there, they send them to me. Uh -huh. I work at Wordsworth. So oh, you work at Wordsworth. Okay. Right. So I got Okay. So, and, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I got That's pretty much so the truth. So they're all the same kids. And a lot of what we're seeing is we're not getting the conduct kids in So these kids are just they, 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 they're problematic. We're seeing a lot of them. The, the MH now we're starting to see. And the autism, the Asperger's, with the behavior compound. We, I got a young man who's Oh, so he knows. Oh, he knows his mom. Yeah. So it's all. So we uh, talk about schools now as opposed to what we know as now, what she knows as now, and what we knew as then. To give the audience just a little bit more of what we talk about. She, that's where we behave. She, she really just now summed up everything that really is. Right. We got a little less than 30 yes. minutes to stretch this out. We're very pissed out. You want to join our conversation? Are you good? All right, let me get some information with this, this, and you stream. I don't say that I can use stream address. Do you know the you stream address? It's a great thing. Okay. I mean, it's simple because last week we told her, I don't know what the heck. Keep well, changing. We just want to go to the door in the face. That's what it is. Because I went to look is. for the joint. Manny just said he watching. Okay. Yeah. What's up, Manny? Turn around, wave at the camera. Yeah. What's up? Good, Mr. Johnson, wave at the camera. Hey, they can see you. Yeah, that's you ain't, you ain't that's, that's what very That's funny. in about 10 minutes. 30 seconds. Okay, yeah, like 10 minutes when we done now. Yeah, 10 <laughs> minutes. Before you even hit the top step, you need to send it out. <laughs> that's how I get down. And we are back here on Sador Presents Open Conversation here on Heat 100 Radio. We're discussing some of the things about school. Um, real quick, if you want to follow us on Ustream, just go to www.ustream, the letter U, stream.com. Search Sador, S-A-D-I-O-R, entertainment. You'll be able to watch us live behind the scenes. If you want to call in and chime in on this topic, 267 Three six eight five three two eight. That's all I'm gonna get. Is it? Yeah, it's seven twenty-five. 
725 p.m. p.m. And then we still need to call them. We need y'all to call them. I got these two tickets. Somebody got to win these tickets today, or um, they're going to Phoenix. Why are people scared to call them? Everybody be texting and inboxing and all these listeners. You know what we should do? <laughs> I start calling them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to call y'all for John Blast. Yeah. And guess what? They got yeah. no friends from 6 to 8. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try to they call my mom. She's going to be like, I'll call my phone. They're going to ignore our phone calls. Yeah, ignore our calls. So we're going to have to start calling people. So all our family and friends, we know y'all out there. Call us, but we're going to call y'all. It's not no threat, but it's much nicer when you call us. We do it a little harsher when we call you. Uh-huh. Here, we, look, here we got dogs in the background. Dogs in the background barking. We got everything going on. was like, who? who? I was like, that's your dog barking. <laughs> so back to this topic. Um, schools. Schools. What I wanted to talk about was the difference between the charter schools in the public schools. I hear a lot of back and forth, back and forth. Is it a difference? I mean, honestly. I haven't had children in the public school for a while, so I can't even answer that question. Yeah? Yeah. I I think it's, you know, it all comes down to funding. Funding, yeah. Right. And the kids still go through that same channel as if they were going to a public neighborhood public school, and then they funnel them out. Our funding still is a part of some, some of the charter schools are chartered through the Philadelphia get funding from them. Some of them are funded by like certain institutions. Uh, mm-hmm. Bill Gates funded partly funded the, the mm-hmm. School of the Future over there, 41st, 42nd and Gerard. So there are things. Mm-hmm. I think it makes smaller settings. Uh, right. They hold kids a little bit more accountable and they can dictate how they want. Their charter, the way their charter sets up, kind of dictates some of the behavior. So I think there's a difference. And I think one of the other key factors in um, in the charter schools is that, um, well, it used to be, and it still is in some charter schools, you have to be selected via right. lottery. Right. So therefore, you have to have a parent that's devoted enough to go and say, hey, my child's not going into the regular school. I'm looking for a charter school. I use charter schools. Once, once my kids left private school, I went. Um, I used charter. I went to charter. I used charter school, and at that time, I was I was elated. I thought that um, I thought that it was probably one of the best things that yeah, ever, yeah. ever happened. Small setting. It was mm-hmm. an Afro, uh, Afrocentric charter mm-hmm. school, yeah. so it was. Uh, it was. It, it gave. I, I felt like it just gave me mm-hmm. my my child what she needed in terms of you know um, knowing mm-hmm. that you know not only knowing that you're special coming from me, but knowing that you're special in that mm-hmm. environment. Oh, so, um, we got a call. I think those are major factors. Do you think? Just a second. We got a caller. He wanted to join the radio. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on, call. Wait a minute. She's going off, too. I can hear. Go ahead. Hello? Yeah. I got you now. This is Heat 100 Radio. You got the Philadelphia Princess of Comedy, Miss Dirt Child. Who's calling? Okay, hi. So I don't know what you're that's why I'm going to call y'all. Why? Because I don't know what y'all doing. What y'all doing over here? Who is that waiting for you? <laughs> okay, Ms. Burchow. I don't know how. Oh, that's because she got, she got the radio on. You got to lower your oh, radio. Oh, you got to lower your radio. Delay. That's a delay. Um, we're talking about charter schools. I need a church word. If you got a church word, you can win some of these tickets. And what time did you tune in? <laughs> I'm just looking for a church word that I can use. He gave us transgression. Who? Somebody got to listen. Now, what you doing? You ain't been listening. I'm all. That's all I got. No, you will find me another word. Yolanda. How are you? Come on, give us a church word. Do you go to church? I go to church. What the pastor <laughs> said? Well, is that the time you sleep? <laughs> I don't care if you want the tickets. We want the word. Come on, you got something. You got a word, a phrase, a noun. You made a noise. <laughs> no, you're not a pastor saying, uh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> now she 
so like <laughs> Okay, that's a good one. That's the whole sentence, but we'll take it. Are you here right in California? Okay, why are we minding your business? Somebody just text me, amen, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I guess they're glad that you gave us the word. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, I just got, yes, Lord. <laughs> My God. <laughs> they pumping on the phone today. Well, we glad that you called, Daddy. How do you think? You're supposed to use the church word right there. Down. You just broke it down. We appreciate you calling in. You're welcome, guys. All right. All right. You go through your Rolodex and call everybody else that knows us and tell them to call us before we call them. Okay. <laughs> that's, a, that's a big Rolodex. That's, that's, that's a sure. big Rolodex. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> that's my girl. See, listen. And as you were saying, my brother and I, um, my mother sent us to Catholic school. We were just two bad kids. She was a single parent. She put us to Catholic school. I got to the tw I got to the A and decided I need boys in my class. She was gonna send me to um Sicilian Academy, I flunked the test. Um Callahan, I flunked the test. This is all on purpose. I did A, B, D, 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 D. You still shaking his head in the background, right? D, 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 C, 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 and I did all of that. And I failed it. My mom's like, I can't stand with my daughter keep following all these tests. On the other hand, my brother chose to continue with his Catholic school education, and he graduated from Roman Catholic. Okay, that was, she needed that. That was her peace of mind. That was her stability. My brother didn't run the streets. My brother, we had another younger brother who was, I'm 11 years, 11 days, and 11 minutes apart from. That was his boy, so he ran with him. He didn't run the street. They gave my mom that peace of mind. But they sent me to Roxborough, and I thought Roxborough was this all-white school. So I got up here and found out it was two projects, Abbott's <laughs> Fork and these folks. I said, what the smack did I get myself into? Because these project people was fighting. And I didn't know nothing about fighting. I thought I was going to be the only white girl, black girl in this all white school. It didn't work out that way. But I, too, had to be selected for that program. That was a Magnus, a Magna program. It was the first year at that program, and I needed to be selected. They had one spot. And my mother must have knew somebody in the school district and they gave me that one spot. So I agree. It is about making your child feel special. You felt special enough to give to her. But those were the days when Catholic school, you didn't hear much about charter schools. It was Catholic schools in our right. day. It was Catholic right. versus public. Exactly. Those are the education right. we got. Right. And as times and stuff changed, then you started hearing public schools because Catholic schools got a little expensive. I just heard a parent the other day say, I'm taking my son out of Catholic school this year. It's getting expensive. Mm -hmm. I was like, are Catholic schools closed? Because mm -hmm. I thought they were right. they're, they're some dinosaurs. Some of them combined. Some did actually close. Right. Some of them combined. Right. Yeah. So a lot that we see now from the school district is because of behavior. And I think it comes back to that old adage stuff that Stacey, it takes a whole village to raise right. a child. We can no longer have that when we send our kids to school and that's it. We have to be a part of their lives from the time they get up in the morning until they return back home. Yeah, well, that, and, and that, I'm sorry. You should ahead. also make sure, you know, that you're helping them with their homework and, and things like that, not just did you do your homework? Yeah, right. sure it did. Yeah, okay. You know what I mean? So you should be on top of that too. It should be a, a parent child process. You know, and also um holding them accountable. Like you said, it does take a village, but the village is not going to work for you if you if someone is telling you about your child and you're like, what? Right. And, you know, because you'll we'll get parents to come up and confront her and want to fight right. and want to fight, fight in front of the child. Right. So you've given the child all this power. Right. And and what can I do against a child that has power that you've given to him? Because right. now. I don't have, I can't tell I don't you, have a win. I can't, yeah, I don't have a win. I can't tell you anything about your child because you've already challenged me. Right. And now I can't tell him or he or she anything. So 
you know, it does take a village. But right. we all in this village all has to work together. Right. Otherwise, yeah. you know. Yeah, That's the same thing you said about the homework. Yeah. Because nowadays, parents see that homework, they be like, I've been through it. You got to do your homework. Yeah, right. right. And then they you start giving them homework problems. If John took a plane 45 miles, and they'd be on the airport call in the airport, like, how much is 45 miles times 30 round trip tickets? <laughs> <laughs> she, she calling the ticket line trying to get my cancer to get his homework. Right. Like, but that was that, that was like the little kid who called nine one one. Right. When he need, I think he was six. Right. And he needed, what, help, he needed help with his homework. And his mother said, "Why are you calling nine one one?" She said, "You, you said, said if call. I need help. help. If I need yeah. help, call." Yeah, yeah. Wow. yeah. 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 yeah and challenge the teachers in a way of wanting to fight. Like when I went into the school, my uh, daughter did a book report and you know we did our research was for Black History Month. She did it or you did it? She did it. I mean, I helped her. Okay. We said she we went to the Channel 12. We went on the computer and got some other things. And then I told her about some personal experiences that I went through. Took it in. You are that old. Yeah, whatever. She comes back <laughs> home. And she, she's upset. And I'm like, well, what happened? And she says, well, I got a bad mark on the book report. So I was like, let me see it. She showed it to me. And I said, okay, don't worry about it. I'll go up to the school with you the next day. So I'll go to the school. And of course, it's not one of us. And this is, she's real young. And I was like, I want to talk to you. Why did you give my daughter this grade on this book report? And she was like, because half the stuff that she had in the book report is fictional and it's not correct. I said, well, I want you to point out to me what's fictional. And as she started to go line by line, I started to correct it. Mm -mm. Let's go to the computer. We can pull it up. I can show you this information. And then she was like, well, there were no black and white only water fountains this year. I said, mm -mm. I was there. I saw them. So you can't tell me what you I did. Because... So as I begin <laughs> to break it down, break it down to her, the mark changed because I was able to show her and verify the information. Wow. Tony, you were holding me. Whatever. But I'm just saying, <laughs> big black man with hair on his arms come and talk to a Caucasian teacher, it's a problem. Chris, you are black. <laughs> <laughs> when I walked up, he said, what's up, my ninja? And I was like, yo, Chris. <laughs> so you coming up with hair on your arms, you scaring people. I didn't scare. We sat there and had a conversation. And I just proved it wrong. So I've never no seen, you're not that much older than I am. I know you didn't see no black and white water fountain. Uh, they still had them in North Carolina in the 60s. Okay. So was she saying to you that they didn't exist during this time period? Was yes. She, mm -hmm. How was the teacher? She was young. She was young. Oh, wow. She just looked young? No, she was young. You saw her birth certificate? I didn't have to. That's fiction. Tell she was young. It's fiction. <laughs> you know, we, one of the things, um, the topics that you brought up, you deal with children that have behavioral issues. Do you think that the children are bored, to be quite honest? I, I mean, challenged or not? they're not challenged because we, yeah. in, let's let's face it, we live in this age of technology. Um, children have cell phones, we have computers, we're surrounded by all of this technology, but do the children, you, you know, you remember as a kid you used to take things apart, put them back together. Do you think children are challenged yeah. enough to write code for uh, uh, operating systems to know how to put together a an iPhone or um, an Android or to write an app or things like that or yeah. do you think they're just bored? It's like here we um, go. I think the I think um, a lot of these children have the ability. They definitely have the ability um, in terms of because sometimes they can pull out things and be like, how did you figure that right. out? You know, they can figure Figures out a whole lot. They can figure it out. You know, so the, the ability is there in terms of challenging them, especially in the classroom. Um, I think that a lot of times their focus is so different. You know, um, I'm glad you said that. Yeah, because focused. people, when they talk about children with, and I hate to use disability because I don't think any child is disabled as far as learning. I think they just learn differently. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Learning differences. Yeah. Exactly. I'm glad that you said that because a lot of people say, well, no, they have a, they have a um, difficulty learning. And that's not it. They just learn differently. Yeah. 
that. Right. I'm glad you said that. And you have to, and you have to, and that's one of the key things is you have to know, and I, I met with one of the young teachers today because she came into my office. She was like, man, after lunch, these kids are so challenging. I can't. I said, well, I'm going to come and observe your classroom after lunch. Came and observed your classroom after lunch. Her, com her confrontational, her confront, front, her confronting style, just the way she did it, it just didn't mix with that eighth grade class. Sure. So um, I gave her some feedback, and I, you know, I let her know that each kid is different, and you never know what bag of trash that kid is bringing with them that morning to sure. school. Kid came in school this morning; he had staples holding his pants up, and you know, um, we looked. It was like, hmm, all right, so we might have to get some resources for this kid. So, but he came in proudly, went up to his class. But we don't even, we, no, none of us are aware of what, where he came from, what was going on in the house. Did he even have breakfast? You know, so like I told her, I said, you're a young teacher. He's an eighth grade kid. You know, he could have a crush on you. So he's acting out because he's getting that attention from you. He doesn't care whether it's negative or not. It's attention. So you have to be able to, to look at each kid in your classroom. You have to look at the smart one. You have to look at the one that's struggling. Everybody is individual. Every, everyone is different. They're all individuals, and you have to treat them as such and educate them as such. You have to learn your students, and that's something that we have to do in the first few weeks of school. Start to learn them. And my mom was just telling me that she doesn't like, um, it's not the kids that make her day off. She taught for 34 years, you know, longer than that almost 36. Um, it was the teachers that made her day hard, not the kids. She said, because she switched. One day she hair all down, down the back, she cut off all her hair and bought a BMW. He's like, what's going on? My brother was like, what's going on? Midlife crisis, what's going on? She left, left picket, I'm going to high school. So now we think that we got to go and fight every day and nobody will put our hands on our mama. And no, she said, the difference between Elementary school and high school students is elementary school kids when they don't want to come to school they don't have anywhere to go. High school kids if they don't want to come to school they don't come. So you're dealing with less behavior of the kids not wanting to be there. So when you sit back and I sat back and I thought about that, yeah, because those kids that are in them elementary schools don't want to be there they're fighting you every day. Mm -hmm. They don't they, they can't stay home. Hooky and go to their friend house. They got to come because fifth and sixth and fourth graders, they don't have a friend house to hook at. Right. So they got to come to school. So you, the teacher, is getting that attitude. Mm -hmm. So then the older kids, she said, it's going to be my easy last five, six years out the gate. She went and did, I think she did like nine years at Pickett. Mm -hmm. Then she did the last 10 years over at Edison. And she was going, give it to me. And she said her days were easy. Because those kids that didn't want to come to school just didn't come. So the ones that were sitting in that chair was the ones that wanted to learn. Then she was the she ran the after school program, which was the kids that didn't get their credits and needed after needed yeah. that extended day yeah. or the credit or whatever. Those kids came after regular school came out, and she just went down to the bottom floor and taught those kids. Those kids had to make up those credits, mm -hmm. so they were there for like two or three hours, twice, three times a week. So it made it easier. And that makes it understand. She said, it's the, your teachers who don't want to teach will make my day hard. But, in, but that's, a, um, that's an interesting point as well. Um, I believe that, yeah, there should be, there should be environments for, uh, an environment for those students like that, that the kids that actually want to be there, there because they want to be there. But you know what the ones that I want? I want that kid that doesn't want to come to school. Right. You know, I want that kid that that has just lost hope. Um, yes, those kids that want to learn and those kids, yes, you know, at least they have a place to go. That's they have I'm a place to go, and they have they have a place to learn without the disruption of of this kid yeah. right here that doesn't want to be here. Sure. Um, but that kid that doesn't want to be here, um, you know, it's just if if, if we don't get them now. Oh, we're going to get them later on. Oh, yeah. You're not climbing in your way. Uh, yeah. You know, we're knocking you over the head. Or it means the uh, principal industrial yeah, complex. Yeah, man, and that's just the, you know, I just, I, I hate to see it happen, you know, and I and I see it happen too much, you know, or did, you know. You know how many students I've lost over the um, past 10 years since being where I am now, and it's, it's it never gets easy. Mm. Never. 
Can I, uh, we talked about the teachers. Do, what is the percentage of teachers coming from the neighborhood that are actually teaching these children that can identify with the environment that they come from, um, as opposed to teachers just coming in, uh, brand new teachers, young teachers, um, that have no clue to what these children are dealing with. I mean, that, that could be part of the behavioral issue, yeah. um, you know, with, yeah. with the children. I, you know what, um, I would say that we get more people coming from outside of our community to educate than we have coming from within our community. I would, I would go on record to say that um, I see it in my school, you know, um, and I saw it where I, when I was in the district. Um, it's more coming from outside. It's a higher number, a higher percentage. And I think that in the initial years, uh, it it is unrelatable for them. If you, but if you can get them to stick and stay, mm -hmm. it becomes relatable. Like and that. they and they yes. and they learn. They learn the children. Stick and stay. So they stick and stay, you got it. That's that's something one of the questions that I was gonna ask was what's the difference from the suburban schools? Is that the word? <laughs> the yeah. schools other than the city schools, because two of my children went to Abington and Lower Morton, and my other son went to, of course, the city school, and it's a big difference. And I don't know if it's like you just said, Stacy, is it the community teachers at the school? Because I know it's a lot of teachers know the parents, they play right. golf, mm -hmm. they go to all the football games. Mm -hmm. I mean, their relationship is different from what Let's I see within the month. city schools. We go to a basketball game in, in the city. Grants versus whatever school, or some school versus some school. It's a fight. Yeah. Yeah. It's a neighborhood fight. It's right. break out. The last couple of fights, basketball games turned into be shootouts where a little kid was hit. Right. And played with him on his way out of it because it was a game inside. As to up in the suburbs, there's police, yeah, the ATAs, yeah. and there's controlled behavior, the mentality. In the suburbs, is very free. Well, when I used funding. to, when I when I used to go to my mom's house, I I leave my doors unlocked. My car door was sitting in front of the door. Yeah. We went on a nine day cruise. I never locked the door. Car sat right in front of the door. Nobody touched it. Let me lock that nine day that car nine days in the city. Day one, it been gone. Mm. It's the mentality of the people up there. Those teachers got I hate to say, it, but do we do have some in the city? Those teachers up in the suburbs. Man, they love every kid that come through the door. They're about your life, they're about you succeeding, they're about everything. You look at your kids and tell them. Well, I man. think the bigger picture is parents are holding those teachers accountable. Right? Exactly. It's, right. It's, it's, right. That's the bit, that's it. Mm -hmm. Because to, to be honest, if you go out there, especially as a, um, a special education teacher, director, anything, though you're not, nothing's getting by them. Right. If you're responsible for educating their their child, they they have a certain expectation criteria that has to be met, and if you don't meet it, they are at, they're at that school. They are pounding down the doors. So the teachers have to rise to that occasion. You know, they get paid to rise to that occasion. Mm -hmm. Teachers out in the suburbs probably make double the amount that we make here in the city. Mm -hmm. You know, and um and I hate to say it, but. When you when you're getting paid a little more, some people's their they investment is their investment is a little right. is a little and, better. Mm -hmm. you know? But also you're earning you you're earning that money. Right. Because those once again, those those parents are not just going to accept anything. Right. Those parents are there to monitor what's coming in and out of their home. You know, not only not to say that those kids don't get into it, because I think that the drug thing is probably bigger out there in right. the county. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and they get into different Types of different things. type of things than we right. than our city kids. Their 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 battles are different. Not right. to say that their battles are any right. any right. better right. or any worse than ours, but their battles are different. Mm -hmm. So when you're dealing with a different battle, it's 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 a the parent. You still have those same parents, mm -hmm. and those parents, a lot of times, want somebody to to be their scapegoat for what is going on with their kid. And mm -hmm. who is the teacher? It's not going to be the parent. It's going to be the teacher. Right. So if their kid gets into something, it's not their fault. It's the teacher's fault. So 
to answer your question, my view is is that parents are holding teachers accountable out there, whereas inner city, it's more far and in between. You know, um, you would hope that the teachers are doing their job, but our struggles are different. Our, these, our, our parents are out here working. If they if they can do three four jobs, jobs. Right. do they have time? To, John, did you do your homework? Please tell me you did your homework. Yeah, right. Thank God. All right, go to bed. Uh, I, you know, I gotta get stuff ready for tomorrow. Right. You know, so it's just so it's it's different. You yeah, know, yeah. more single parent households. So therefore, with with only one parent dealing with the struggle, they're tired. You know, whereas out in the county, you have more dumb parent household. So it's two people to bounce off of. Mom has more flexibility because dad is usually the the, the, bread, the big bread winner. Although, you know, it's kind of building up to both other ways nowadays. Right. But still, at the end of the day, the, the struggle is so much different for our parents here in the city. So, you know, it's and not like for some of them, it's not like they don't want to care. It's just that the day is so they so overwhelmed. Yeah. It's tight. Trust me, when they have a PTA meeting out in the suburbs, they don't have a story mix. Pax. What did you say? Have a what meeting? PTA. Okay, I thought you said PTA. Yeah, she's going to get on you. See? <laughs> no, I'm great. Right. I was right on saying you got to protect yourself. You see, I said, is that a word? I looked at her and went, what's she run with? it? I'm going to check it out. But, but they're, they're Pax. Plus, they get more funding. Uh, you know, they have new school books. They have new computers versus what we might have here in the inner city. If you take a walk in a public school in the city and then take a walk in a suburban school, a huge difference. I mean, Absolutely. huge. Public right, school. So, so, so I'm going to play, play advocate. Go ahead, Stacey, after you um, that. We talked about charter schools and we talked about public schools. Do you, what do you think that the charter schools have taken away money from the, pub, from the public schools? No, because they closed a the public school. Who's, right. And they just, they they just a lot of the funds and move it to the next one. Yeah. Yeah, somebody has to. Um, the funding has I to heard the other day goes to the sports because yeah. the athletes, uh, sorry, real quick on the news, the funding for schools is going to the sports programs. So that's where 90% of the, the funding is going to. And a lot of the kids can't read. read. Right. Yeah. But they're holding these charter schools more accountable to these right. days. They're, they're closing down charter schools, you know. Yeah, right. they're, they're, they're losing them and they're kind of getting picked up by these bigger, um, the bigger charters. And these bigger charters, they work longer days um, and they're really, they're really putting it in. So there's some that are really, uh, that are really doing a good job. And like I said, at the end of the day, if you can't educate them enough, in the regular setting, you gotta get it somewhere because you're not gonna have these kids failing. One right. thing, one thing I do say, I do commend all the teachers. Um, I'm seeing more children go to college. I think that it's starting to be—I don't know if it's a fad or not—but with the proms and kids going to college and trying to, um, it's starting to be the thing now that you're going to college. Um, as far as what you said, the uh, the funding—if you go to a prom at a suburban school and then go to a prom at a city school, I think that the city people spend way more money on the prom prime. dresses, yeah. cars, <laughs> yes. shoes. Yes. Some yes. of them look like wedding dresses. Yes. Yeah. 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 I'm not just I don't wedding get dresses, it. but man, some of that stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, I spent $600 for this dress and that, which is all good. You know, you want to look nice. But my thing is, if they would take some of that money throughout the year and invest into the tutoring, Investing into the school projects and stuff like that, then maybe the education level would be different. Because mm -hmm. when the prom comes, it's like the Grammys. Wait. I mean, if you look at some of these places, nah. I'd be like, Sheesh. in the Hispanic community, eighth grade graduation is major. They go all out, <laughs> they give them ball gowns and tuxedos yeah. and yeah. suits because they know, so for a lot of them, they know yeah. they'll never yeah. see a 12th grade graduation. Right. right. So that's why they do that. But yeah, that's, that's what it comes back to mentality. It's right. like, how do you short change your child to be able to feel like they're not going to go to high school instead of giving them that positive energy to push them to go to high school. Right. One of the promises I always made to my children, um, I always said to them, you guys are going to graduate college. We It wasn't even up for discussion that after high school, you would take a year off and and decide what you where you want to go, what you want to do. You decide that when you are in your first or second year of whatever university you're in. <laughs> and and 
And it was interesting because my brother actually asked both of them, Did you, was there ever a time you didn't want to go to college? And they said, no. Mom always said we're going to go to school. You know, that wasn't, that wasn't an option. I love our social media friends. They hit me up. Y'all remember them hostess fruit pies? <laughs> they used to tell me, yeah. They sent this to me. This is why we need we have to have heat, a fan, air conditioner. Uh, yeah, the air conditioning and stuff like that. Anybody want to do raw fish? Yeah, I'm, I'm getting text messages. Correct. <laughs> I love to get these text messages because they show that people me. listen. <laughs> yeah, because we was here at Call House. Um, <laughs> black cherry, lemon, peach, apple, blueberry, and cherry pie. Those was just the hostess pies. Remember the hostess pies? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, people are sending this to me, so shout out to everybody who's sending me everything online. We love the feedback, we love the energy. We so just, let's, let's go around the room um, and close out because we got like four minutes left. Um, first, I appreciate you coming. So Thank you. We could have brought some dinner since she was cooking. <laughs> could have grabbed a couple plates, you know. Uh, <laughs> Sit next to me, smelling all good, like dinner. Smell like dinner plates. <laughs> smell like dinner plates. Speaking of dinner, tikka pies. Tikka pies. Call them tikka pies. I told her what's her name. We should, uh, what's her name? Star Nelson. We still work for our plates. Yeah. So two years ago, she's supposed to be bringing dinners. Uh, all right. Real quick, let's go around to our guests and just give a little uh, close out feedback on the school as far as what do you feel? that the listeners can do, or the viewers that's watching on Ustream, or the ones that's going to watch on YouTube, can do to contribute to help make a change to the public schools. I mean, is it visit the schools more, get involved, maybe start some donations, or like, what's your input on that? Um, I would say just be proactive in your student's life, you know? Be proactive in your student's education. Um, do the best you can. You know, we understand what you're dealing with. Uh, we understand the obstacles and all those other things, the battles that you have, that you that you have to confront. Not even dealing with the um, the peer pressure that your child is dealing with. Um, sometimes the streets are bigger than you, and um, and uh, that makes it difficult. But I would say just you know just be proactive. Just try to be there. Um, call the schools. Hold us accountable. Hold us accountable. That's all I'm asking. Hold us accountable and make us continue to um, to allow us to be in your your court to help you uh, educate and send your child into this world in a in a way where they can prosper. Stacy, as they say, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. Let's let's not allow our children to fall by the wayside and. You know, I have to reiterate everything you said. Uh, be more involved. Uh, uh, be in the school. Hold everybody accountable. Uh, sit with your child. Do their homework with them, even if you don't understand. Be there for them. Bring your shade button. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Y'all know that shape butter that kept my feet all smooth all summer. That was Miss Stacy, and it's jars about to the empty. I'm, I'm going around the rims now. Right. Um, shout out to my awesome. number one fan. She's <laughs> won the tickets to the masquerade party. They can go. I won't be there, but. She can go. Man, we give her the Phoenix. Phoenix one. Phoenix one. Yeah, she calls. So she gets the tickets, and that's what we're going to do. This is your girl, Philadelphia Princess of Comedy. I am going to be, what's working? Is this the 12th? Yeah. I'm going to be up in uh, Jeffersonville. No, I'm going to the shore this weekend. This weekend, I'm going to the shore. Um, and to the shore. No, just for the day. No, okay. my comedy. Just okay. for the day. I'm going Thursday to the shore. And, um, if y'all got any more uh, church words, y'all know y'all can get me at I'm at OC at Miss Darkchild at gmail.com. Hit me up. We're on Facebook. Um, Every it's getting a little crazy though. It's, but don't forget the 19th, the next comedy show is the 19th at Temptations. At night, we're going to do that. I'll be at a church show earlier that day, 12th in uh, Leon. So I'm going from non cussing to cussing. So <laughs> whatever you want, I can do it that day. If you don't want to hear no cuss words, meet me at the church. You want to hear some foulness? I'll see y'all at uh, Temptations later on that evening. But 
This is your girl, Always Stay Plugged In. I'm on each and every Thursday, 6 to 8, right here on G100 Radio. My man, Simply Kiki. I want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in with us tonight. We hope you tune in again next week, every Thursday, 6 to 8, right here on Heat 100 Radio. I mean, simply, then you will look forward to you. If you got a dumb, dumb moment, please send it to me, and uh, I'll try to get it on for you. What are you going to send it to? The we all wait. The we all wait. We all wait. It's don't start with WW. Oh, see, simply D at gmail.com. Oh, wait. 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 So, because you know, people O-C-S-I-M-P-L-Y-D think he, he, S-I-M-P-L-Y-D at gmail.com. Uh, no WW. <laughs> <laughs> That's your boy, Mark Five. I want to thank our guests for coming out. Um, I don't know what happened to Tony. Uh, that's a nice story. <laughs> Next week, we're going to uh, discuss women empowering women. We're going to have a couple of guests on to discuss that topic. Um, Shout out to Suffocate E Moving. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta make sure the mask got right. Thanks for tuning in. This is Door Presents Open Conversation. If you want to get at me, just search Sador, S A D I O R L L C. Just Google and you'll find me on Sador. Or email me at openconversationshow at gmail.com. See y'all next week here on Heat 100 Radio. You could get that out. What up, Will? Shout out to Mr. Devon. He's handling the damn. We love y'all. Shout out Tune to Chris. Shout out to, um, what's his name? Tom. Tom. You got stuck in Pope traffic. Pope traffic. Pope traffic. Already. 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 You already. calling out Pope already. Allegedly. You can allegedly show up. Go on your screen. Search the door. LLC. You'll see this show. It'll be uploaded to the YouTube. Thanks again to the guests. Check us out next Thursday. Peace. Be out. Be out. Allegedly stuff. Allegedly. So let me tell you. Let me tell you the story behind this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, this one. <laughs> see this when you first got because we was upstairs.